Ron, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. So tell me how you became involved uh, in the VC industry. I actually started my first VC job with Tim Draper, okay. uh, based in, in San Francisco. He has a network of VC funds and also kind of a, a great mission to empower early stage founders. Mm -hmm. So uh, I met him at the very, very beginning uh, of my career. And at the time, I was actually involved in, in biotech, um, a lot more focusing on the science part. And he asked me to join his firm, uh, and I ended up staying there for about four years and a half before joining 500. So that, that's how it started. Excellent. And what companies, what types of companies are you looking to invest in right now or are you really excited about? Well, for one, for sure, you know, Africa is a, is a great um, and exciting VC market uh, mm -hmm. because of not only the opportunity in different sectors, but also because uh, we're seeing now that VC as an asset class is actually starting to pick up. So, um, you know, I, I think that in addition of emerging markets in general, Africa is quite exciting. Uh, we're sector agnostic, so we often look at companies from all sectors. Uh, we do invest in tech-driven companies, so they have to be at least uh, tech-driven in that, in that regard. But when I look at the continent today, I think there is a wide range of opportunities in various sectors related to health, education, um, agriculture, mm -hmm. uh, biotech, uh, fintech, obviously, but also marketplace and, and supply chain. So there's just so much on top opportunities in so many sectors that for me, I, I think it makes it even more exciting. What is the biggest mistake that you see founders make when they're trying to pitch you or their company? A big one, like I mentioned earlier, is the assumption that they don't have to be proactive about um, setting the foundations of their company to be able to scale and, mm -hmm. and thinking that it will come along the way um, because because of how fragmented the market is, um, they do need very early on to be quite pragmatic mm -hmm. and proactive about what we mean to be active in multiple markets, so that's one. And, and the second one is really, um, they need to be able to think about setting the foundation of their companies to be attractive at the later stage. So mm -hmm. when it comes to, like I said, accounting, bookkeeping, um, even IP uh, contracts with employees, just making sure that they're setting best practices from the beginning. And, and I think, you know, it's on the assumption that they will be able to change uh, when, when things get serious. But I always say it's, it's much easier to start a habit than to change it. So um, trying to start with leading with those best practices before trying to change them later on. Right, makes sense. And my last question for you is because, you know, we're two women sitting here. Um, it's no secret that women don't receive as much VC funding as men. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think this can, can change on the continent? So it's a, it's a sad truth, right? Uh, when you look at the numbers, most of the investment is going to male-driven companies, um, male-driven founders. And um, it's, it's, it's quite ironical because when you look at entrepreneurs mm -hmm. across the continent, especially even when you look on the SME side, um, the continent is the place that has the highest number of female entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the African economies are actually driven by female entrepreneurs. Um, and so the question becomes, if the economies are mainly driven by female entrepreneurs, why are they not receiving nearly uh, the same amount of funding? And I think a lot of it comes from access. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have access to the same opportunities, uh, but also they don't have access to the same tools that allow them to maybe be as polished as male founders are by the time they get in front of investors. So. A lot of it really comes through how do we get to female founders from the beginning? Mm -hmm. How do we make sure that we give them the tools that allow them to be just as equipped mm -hmm. when it comes to VC entrepreneurship? But also, I think it also poses the question of how do we look at different forms of financing? Because the type of businesses that female entrepreneurs are leading often require different forms of financing than equity. Um, so whether it be debt or loans or microfinance, um, that usually is a lot of the type of working capital that they need. And because those forms of financing are not necessarily as developed, mm -hmm. the numbers are, are very, very, very low compared to the number of female entrepreneurs. Right, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you, thank you so much.